Jared Poland, Frono's Photo. Dot com, and this is your mega photo news fix because I've been away for a week. This photo news fix is brought to you by Data Color, who still want me to ask if you calibrate your monitor. From now until September 30th, which is extended, get the Spider 5 Elite for only $139 when you trade in any other calibrator. Head on over to datacolor.com slash fro for more info. Could this leaked photo of the GoPro Hero 6 Black be for real? From the looks of it, it certainly does look for real. On top of that, back in February, GoPro CEO Nick Woodman teased the existence of the Hero 6, saying the camera would arrive in 2017. And I do have some breaking news for you. There will be a GoPro Hero 7 one day. You heard it here first. So what changes might be in order from the 5 to the 6? From what I can see from the box, it looks like all that's changed is the ability to shoot 4K at 60 frames a second versus 4K at 30 frames a second in the Hero 5. Now, is this upgrade big enough to make you sell off your 5s in favor of 6s? Steven, I ask you, and Steven's not here because he's away on vacation, so I'll just say no. Now, what do you think? Is it worth the upgrade or is it time to look at a cheaper Chinese knockoff that does the exact same thing? Are you a fan of Bindi Irwin? Because I certainly am. Well, the bad news is this story is not about her, but about her 13-year-old brother, Robert, who so happens to be a nature photographer. According to his website, Robert Irwin is a nature photographer and wildlife warrior who travels the world in search of incredible images of wildlife and wild places that have inspired many. Now, if you're wondering what he shoots with, well, based on this photo, it's absolutely clear that he shoots Sony. Nope. He actually shoots Canon. It looks like one of the cameras is a 5DSR and the other is from the 1DX series. Not sure if it's the one or two. He also has a 70 to 200 2.8L as well as a 100 to 400L. Now this does make total sense to me since his family does own a zoo, which brings up the question, Todd, have you ever seen So We Bought a Zoo? He's always around animals, he has access to places many others do not, and his family is a champion for conserving and protecting wildlife. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if he ends up with a travel photo show before I do. I'd be very disappointed. Speaking of travel shows, we have two episodes, one from the Grand Canyon and one from Germany. They're linked down below. Guess who's back? Say he's back, back. Actually, no. Polaroid is officially back in the instant film game with the launch of Polaroid Originals, a new brand dedicated to analog instant photos. Todd, do you hear that noise? There's a bunch of hipsters rejoicing outside, including this guy. On September 13th, the 80th anniversary of the founding of Polaroid by Edwin Land in 1937, and after going bankrupt in 2001 before ceasing instant film production in 2008, instant film once again will brandish the name Polaroid. Or Instax if you shoot Fuji. Now keep in mind, in May, the Impossible Project purchased Polaroid's brand and intellectual property, which means no more shitty Polaroid TVs and other crappy products. At least I hope so. What this does mean is that I'm pretty sure the branding of Impossible Project is officially dead. So what exactly was announced? First up, we have the One Step 2 camera, which follows in the footsteps of the iconic Polaroid One Step, which I think I may have over my shoulder somewhere since I have a ton of Polaroids. The One Step 2 is a fully analog camera that's compatible with the new iType film and 600 film. Todd, do you know what the I stands for? Intel. No. Incredible. Seriously, incredible. The new camera includes a high quality lens that will focus from two feet to infinity and maybe beyond if your name is Andy. It will be powered by a lithium ion battery and is supposed to last 60 days. You can also recharge it with a USB cable. And it's supposed to be idiot proof. That's not an official quote though, but this is. Every time you press the shutter, thousands of chemical reactions ignite to create one real, unpolished, completely unique image. Polaroid Originals writes. Now my question is, what happens if you don't have film in the camera? Are those reactions still actually happening? <laughs> the new iFilm comes in color, black and white, and special edition flavors, which I hope grape is one of them because that was my favorite blow pop. Here's another quote to help you get through your day. The new film features the distinct dreamy aesthetic that Polaroid is famous for. 
AKA crappy out of focus images with blotches from where the chemicals did not develop. The good news is that film will only cost you $16 for eight photos, which if my math is correct, is $2 per photo. Todd, can you double check my math? You can pre-order the camera right now for $100 or wait until October 16th where you can buy it in stores. They also released what I think is pretty cool, 8x10 color and black and white instant film, which will set you back 18 bucks a photo, aka $179 for a box of 10. I still think my math is right. Now will you be jumping on your moped to rush out and buy the new camera or film? Question mark? Remember Naruto, the selfie-taking monkey at the center of a bitter battle between photographer David Slater and PETA? Jennifer Lawrence showing her, no, can't, can't do that. Back in 2011, David was in an Indonesian national park when Naruto picked up his camera and snapped this selfie that went instantly viral. Now my question is, who's his dentist because his teeth are perfectly straight? At that point, a debate broke out where people questioned whether or not David should own the photo since he didn't actually take it. Well, in 2015, PETA sued Slater on behalf of Naruto. Did Naruto actually ask for help? In the hopes that he could get the official copyright assigned to the six-year-old monkey. Now, the US government and legal system actually argued against PETA's claim. So basically, PETA wasted my taxpayer dollars on this bullshit. That money totally could have been spent on a wall. Even after the US government pushed back against PETA, PETA continued with its legal battle against Slater, which has driven him to financial ruin. After six years of stupid legal battle, Slater and PETA have reached an agreement. Yay, exciting. PETA states that this case broke new grounds for animal rights. And I think PETA has bigger fish to fry and should focus on something else. See what I did there? Fried fish. Here's another strangely worded quote that PETA has given us. Naruto and the famous monkey selfie photographs that he undoubtedly took clearly demonstrate that he and his fellow macaques, well, Jules, the funny thing about my back is, like so many other animals, are highly intelligent, thinking, sophisticated beings worthy of having legal ownership of their own intellectual property and holding other rights as members of the legal community. Are you fucking kidding me, PETA? Where should I send payments to Naruto for using his image? 42 Wallaby Way? This entire debate is one of the dumbest wastes of money and legal resources I have ever seen. Yes, animals should have rights, but not to collect money for their images. If you want to really spend money on legal defense, why don't you send it to the hardworking people at the Innocence Project who are fighting to get innocent people released from prison? The settlement stated that Slater can now license the monkey selfie and keep 75% of the profits, with 25% of them going towards charities dedicated to protecting the welfare or habitat of the monkey named Naruto. Or, in other words, back to PETA, in my opinion. And there you have it, that's your photo news fix this time around, the mega edition. To check out the last photo news fix, click on the screen right here. And if you haven't hit that subscribe button on YouTube just yet, please go ahead and do that. And one more thing, if you're on Facebook, please give this a Sherry McSherrison. And that's it, Jared Poland Frono's photo. Dot com. See ya.